stack cuts. Top of the stack makes a continuation cut. Okay? If the upline cut from the dump, right? The first cut doesn't work, second cut doesn't work. Upline cut from the dump goes up, it's there, continue the continuation just like you were in normal completion. Make sense? On a continuation cut, where can he cut to? Where can it continue? A man whose role it is to make a continuation cut, he's the last man in the stack, where can he cut to? Right. The idea is that he cuts deep, but I want you guys to remember, now that we're in the medium stage, you guys get the basics of this, I want you to start getting the more, or slightly more advanced things. He goes wherever he can get open for continuation. Does that make sense? So yes, he's supposed to cut deep, and if the deep cut is unsuccessful, he comes in short. But honestly, if this man's way overplaying on the deep, he can just cut short right away. Or he can do any manner of things that he wants to get open. But as I said, if you stick within the form, you can do no wrong. All right, but if you improvise and you shut down the offense, you're doing wrong. Does that make sense? Okay. So, upline cut is successful. What's the next cut? A continuation cut. Where can you cut to? No, this is the Yeah. So try to cut deep, but if you can, I'm in short. Okay? When he comes in short, if that pass is not there, what happens? It's clear. What happens next? Right, so it's really easy to remember. Continuation cuts are just count as the first cut. That make sense? That's all it is, it's the first cut. So now that you know that, what happens if it's unsuccessful? One, what does a cutter do? Okay, so a continuation cut. The continuation cut is unsuccessful. What does the cutter do? He should clear, and that's a cut in and of itself, from the bottom of the stack. Two, what happens? All right, the man at the top of the stack cuts. That's the second cut. All right, what else happens? Yeah, the stack will shift slightly to reorient position. All right, make sense? Okay, good. Does the dump do anything? Does the handler do anything? All right, he looks for the clearing cutter and for the incoming cutter. Good? If that cutter, that second cutter, so you have the continuation cut, doesn't work. And you have another cut, doesn't work. Then what happens if that pass is not there? The dump should make an upline cut. That's exactly right. Dump makes an upline cut. That makes sense? All right? If that upline cut is not there, what happens? Then he should be going back to the original position. So he'll go back backwards, and at the same time, the second cut should go back to the super cut. That's exactly right. The second cut has the whole time been going back to the super cut. If you have a second cut, you're just going to cut to be a super cut. All right? The guy gets the upline, it's a little more running to get back into the stack. That's it. So the second cut is always clearing to be the super cut. But that's exactly right. The upline cutter, dump, will come back and actually get a dump pass. Make sense? Okay. How far do you actually want the super dump to be As you said, 40 yards. As far as it needs. If it's 10 yards and the guy poaches, 10 yards. So it's one can never the defender just leaves you? Yes. That's the idea of the super dump. That even if it's 60 yards back, we have a wide open throw to you, theoretically. Never right. told us how the offense shifts when it gets to the end zone. I didn't hear you, what? Never told us how the offense shifts when it gets to the end zone. Right, we're going to get to that in a second. So, if the dump goes for a dump pass, right, and he doesn't get it, what are the handler's options? So, he's looking at this dump, it's not there. What are his other options? He has to know these. Deep pass or short pass. He's making a standard cut. That's right. And what's his other option? Super. Super. That's exactly right. All right. Um, good. Okay. So, if that dump is successful, right? Dump. Dump is successful. What we're going to be doing is, I've decided now, uh, I've slept on it. The super dump is going to get the, the first initiative, all right? Unless he's really far back. Super dump is kind of the first initiative to get open. 
That's actually a really powerful option because if he gets open on the open side, good, you just continue the offense. But if he gets open on the break side, you have an even bigger break to start your, your continuation swings. Does that make sense to everybody? So, if the dump gets the pass, he's looking for the super dump to continue the offense. In whatever direction he's going to go, either to the open side or the swing or the break side. Make sense? Good. Okay. John, once that super dump gets that reception, let's say he gets it on the break side, where is the continuation swing cut coming from? Bottom of the stack. How, how many cuts in the bottom of the stack are there? Two. Two? Can it be more than two? Theoretically, it can be, but it's really not going to be. The idea is that you're going to communicate when you're in a good position to continue the offense. But you're both right. It's never really going to be more than two. I mean, you'd have to make such small gains. You're talking about, we're already three, you know, a quarter of the way across the field. So you're talking that you're going to have a super dump cut and two more cuts. So that's three cuts, and they have to all be less than 10 yards to not be on the sideline. See what I'm saying? It's never going to be more than two. So he's right, and you guys are right. Theoretically, it's as many as it takes, but it's never really going to be more than two, ever. All right? So, Amelia, once the swing cuts are done, what's the next cut we're looking for? The guy from the back of the stack runs deep and looks for the open. That's looks exactly right. The continuation cut from the guy at the back of the stack. All right? Again, he cuts deep. Theoretically, he can cut wherever he gets open. Make sense? All right. So, you have an offense that we all understand. It's constantly moving, right? Good. Okay. So, let's go over some slightly more advanced situations. If I have the disc, I'm on the sideline. I'm the handler, right? And I've got my dunk. Where? Yeah, horizontally to my left. If I'm on the forehand side, being forced forehand, it's going to be to my left. It's going to be directly horizontal with me. All right, perfect. Got my stack, okay? But they're poaching. They're poaching short and they're poaching deep. What happens? John, what would you do? We haven't talked about this. Is it on, yeah, on the close side of the stack? There's a guy poaching short and deep. Yeah. The open side, yeah. Um, you should have a cut deep to draw the poacher away and then try and exploit the zoom back to him. Right, so you see what he's saying? So what he's doing is he's sending a guy deep to play their game, keep the deep poacher occupied. With a short poach, what do you do about him? Well, the way I like to break a poach is you send a guy deep, to extract the deep guy, and then you send the poacher's man to, to mid-range. Does that make sense? So it's a pretty easy throw to just get it around the poach. None of the other defenders are really able to gamble that much because then they leave their man. Does that make sense? That's how I like to break the poach. That's how we're going to break the poach when we can. All right? But what's a really simple way to break the poach? Exactly. Swinging the disc. All right? So, um, if we're ever poached like that, recognize that we're going to go away from our whole standard form. Why do we do that? Well, we want to punish them for poaching us. It's called keeping the defense honest. It's a very common theme. We have an offensive system that, that we know what to do when the defense is playing honest defense. You guys get the concept of honest defense? But if they're not playing honest defense, then we have to make them play honest defense. So if we're the poach, I hope you understand what's going on. I'm on the forehand side. The guy poaching short, this guy poaching deep. The deep man's deep goes deep, forces, draws that guy even further out. Meanwhile, the guy who's being poached just plots himself about midway down the field. All right, you have a nice little 25-yard throw, put a little curve on it, right past the poaching. 